All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We continue talking football. Last season's English Premier League Golden Boot winner, Erling Haaland, is being heavily criticised following his lacklustre performance in the top-of-the-table clash between Manchester City and Arsenal at the Etihad Stadium on Sunday. Defending champions Manchester City were surprisingly held to a goalless draw, the first time they had failed to score in a Premier League match at home since a 2-0 defeat to Crystal Palace in October 2021. After the match, we saw both Arsenal and Man City sliding down the table and a former Premier League winner and Hall of Fame inductee, Roy Keane, labelled Haaland's performance as being below average. This is what he said. The level of his general play is so poor and not just today. The way he's laying stuff off and in terms of headers, in front of goal, he's the best in the world. But for general play, for such a player, and not just today. He has to improve. He's almost like a League 2 player. That's the way I look at him. His general play has to improve and it will over the next few years. Being a brilliant striker is fantastic, but he has to improve his all-round game. He has to. Well, weighing in on the matter is former Trinidad and Tobago international, Brent Sancho. Good afternoon, Brent. Good afternoon, Mariah. Good afternoon to all your viewers. What's <laughs> up with Roy Keane? Is this criticism of Erlen Haaland justified? Look, sometimes I, I do wonder when uh, former players become put in that uh, the memory erase very quickly as to what it was like to be a player. And... Um, when they make outlandish, it seems like the more outlandish a statement you make, uh, probably is the more jobs you get because it's, I think it's over harsh. It's ridiculous in, in what he's saying. Yes, uh, Haaland has had a poor couple of games. He's been poor since he's come back from a um, injury. But to, to describe him and put him in that sort of mold is is really uncalled for. And uh, it's, I'm disappointed a player of, uh, of, of, of course, Roy Keane's caliber as a player and footballing knowledge to make those sorts of statements. And I think we're forgot, we, we forgot that last season, he had 54 Premier League goals in 56 starts. It was his first time with Manchester City and he won the treble with the team. And I just have to say, he didn't just win the treble. He was a key part of Manchester City winning that treble. I think like everybody has forgotten that. And now, don't get me wrong, I understand. Everybody wants to see Haaland involved, right? Because when I looked at some of these statistics... Of course, uh, Bukayo Saka for Arsenal is leading when it comes to um, things as touches and all these different things in the EPL. When you look at the stats, right? But that is not Erling Haaland's role. And to me, to be judging him on somebody else's role, I think that's extremely harsh, Brent. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it really big. And you have to add Mariah as well, his age as well. He's a young kid. He's young. I, sometimes I forget and... that myself. <laughs> Exactly. And he, he still has a lot of developing to do. He still has a, a lot, uh, of course, of growth in the game as well. Uh, and as you rightfully said, he hit the premiership uh, like a house on fire and, and broke all sorts of records last season. Coming off a bit of an injury, it's still uh, he's trying to get his rhythm, which is, again, an important factor when it comes to strikers. You always hear them talk about finding their rhythm, finding uh, back, of, of course, uh, that, that uh, consistency in their game. Uh, and he just haven't been able to do that so far. But it doesn't take away from the fact of what he, he's able to do it. But when you hone in on, on Manchester City, and I think that's really what Roy and the rest of Pune should be looking at, is the dynamics of Manchester City have changed. I mean, the clock and roll, Kevin De Bruyne just coming off an injury. People like Jack Grealish and, and maybe Doku to a lesser extent not really having the type of seasons that is expected from them. So a little bit more pressure is put on Haaland and, 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 of course, requirements in the game that is not normally what they do for Manchester City. Uh, they don't have the sort of presence, attacking presence, like they used to. Uh, and, and I think when you, when you add all those factors up, it then equates to the fact that I don't think Haaland is getting the sort of supply line like he had before. And, of course, teams have adjusted in the way that they played them. Just just look at Arsenal. They, their approach was a lot different last season going to the Etihad than it was this season. 
And I have a question, and this is like the most important question I'll ask you for this show, right? <laughs> what if Erling Haaland does all the different things that everybody expects him to do or wants him to do, as in, you know, Im improve his passes and his touches and all these different things, and the goal scoring drops? What happens then? But then you, you have a you have a serious dilemma because if you go back to why they bought Erling Haaland, it's just that to put the ball into the back of the net when. Kuna Guerrero left Manchester City. There was a void. They talked about the fact that uh, Manchester City didn't have a genuine number nine, uh, and and all of the criticism and the, and the so-called pundits had a lot to say about Manchester City and the way they played football games. Albeit, of course, they still went on to win the title, but there was there was a call for a genuine number nine, and there was all these conversations about who can bring in where there's uh, of course uh, all these different uh, lists of players, but they got arguably the best striker in the world to come to them, the best finisher in the world. And he's been brought there to finish. And, you know, what he did last season is incredible, absolutely incredible. Again, using all the factors that you laid out, inclusive of his age, is incredible. And now, coming off a season hit injury, you have to give the the, 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 the player some time to go. Yes, it's, it's, it's disappointing that he's not putting up the same numbers, but that's all part of his growing process. It's all part of his developmental process. So... Uh, it's a bit unfortunate that he's receiving uh, that sort of criticism from people who really should know better. Yeah, Brent, I like the first set of comments that you made that some of these pundits, they <laughs> seem to um, crave making these, um, these, these startling comments to attract <laughs> attention to themselves because that's what I felt when I heard the comment first. Having said that, when I heard the headlines and then I saw the full text of what he said, um, I was a little less bothered by his comments because he did say, he did admit, even what we just presented, that in front of goal, he's the best in the world. And that wasn't what I had heard when, the, when I heard the headlines. He, the headlines pretty much spoke about him being a League Two player and how awful he was. But Roy Keane admits in this same narrative that in front of goal, he's the best in the world. The thing is, Brent, as a, as a top footballer yourself, you would understand that Holland is not a, a silky, he's not a silky player if if he were a tennis player he wouldn't have been Roger Federer that's not his game he's just a big strong efficient striker that's what he does and because he isn't a silky player if he loses form he's not going to look that good no you're right and he has a particular set of skill set doesn't he really and and he does not have uh, of course, uh, the, as we call him, R9, R9 Ronaldo type as well. Fat boy Ronaldo, as we call him now. He doesn't have that sort of skill and ability to create on his own. He's, he has a, a particular set of skill set. What is that? Of course, he's he's great at run, making runs in behind defenders. Uh, he's good at, in the air once given the right sort of surface. Uh, and he has a lot of peace within it, within, with what he does. And when you when you combine that with a with a Silva, David Silva, a Kevin De Bruyne, and and, and etc. These sorts of players, I can't unlock defensive Jack Grealish and his one v one capabilities, and then laying it and Foden, etc. Then you have a potent striker. And as I said, Haaland really is the type of player that relies heavily on the total at some of his team and not his individual capabilities. Uh, he's just not that striker to create on his own. But once given that chance, he obviously can finish and he can score and put the ball into the back of the net. I think you can't take that away from him. Yes, you're right. Once things are not going well uh, from a team perspective for Manchester City, don't expect uh, Erling Haaland to, to, to score a hat-trick on his own, doing his own thing and creating on his own. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, let's not talk anymore about Roy Keane because he was a good player, but outside of his playing performances and his playing ability, there isn't much more favorable that I can say about Roy Keane. So let's, <laughs> let's, move, let's move from, from Mr. Keane. <laughs> We're sticking with football, though, Brent, because we still have you on set. So um, you'll be on commentary duties in the Trinidad and Tobago Premier League on Wednesday. What can you tell us about the state of the league? Current leaders, uh, AC Port of Spain, um, leading at the moment. Are they favorites for the title? Because they had a good run last year and then faltered at the end, didn't they? I tell you what, Lance, it's it's such a difficult one to call. And, and the reason why it's difficult, because none of the top four teams have played anywhere close to what a championship quality performance should be. They've really struggled. We had an interview with uh, the technical director of AC Port of Spain uh, before the game, uh, Mr. Bateau. And he mentioned that his team is struggling for consistency and fluidity because of the stops 
throughout the latter part of the season. Of course, it was a stop for, for Christmas. It's also a little break as well for Carnival. And recently as well, Lance, it was a break for the international games. So the likes of AC Port of Spain and Police and Defence Force, and when you look at the results that they've getting, they've been dropping points regularly in this last round of football. And you just wonder to yourself, which one of these teams is going to take this title race by its neck and take the charge on? None of them have done that so far. I also have to say that some of the mid-table teams and bottom teams have also shown up to the dance. They've started to take points off of the top team, Central FC, of course, pulling points uh, off of, of the, one of the top, the AC Port of Spain, to be, to, be, to be a little bit more precise. We've seen FC Phoenix do it. We've seen teams on that elk, on that side of the table pull it. So it's made it extremely unpredictable and, and extremely interesting. And I think tomorrow at the Hazy Crawford Stadium may serve up that sort of situation again. Yeah, we, we just had a segment talking about the Jamaica Premier League, the rare nephew Jamaica Premier League, Brent. I know that you keep tabs on, on that as well. Um, given the comparisons between the two leagues, you sound to be a little disappointed with what you're seeing domestically in TNT at the moment. Is it that the, the, the JPL is, is providing, as far as you're concerned, higher quality football? Yeah, no doubt. It's, it's a higher quality of football. I think there's a, there's a wider array of players. You're now seeing players, and we, we spoke about this on, on, on the zone before, from different islands coming to Jamaica and, 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 of course, adding to what is already there, which makes the player pool a little bit more refined than it is here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and I, I, may, I may lean on what, uh, of course, Coach Battle said. I just think that some of the stops that they've had throughout the league, as you've seen players lose form, I think some players uh, may have been disappointed not making into the nas making national team call-ups. I think there's been a, 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 a plethora of reasons why uh, the levels have dropped significantly since the second round have started. Uh, and again, I want to add as well, uh, Lance, that the grounds, and I know this is something that we at Trinidad and Tobago should never complain about, but the facilities and the grounds have been atrocious because of some of the restrictions placed uh, by the government as it relates to wetting some of the pitches. And so they've been bone hard uh, mm -hmm. and rock dry in some, so it's not been conducive or conducive to good football. So you add all those factors, and I think that is what we've been seeing so far. So from a level perspective, it's certainly not what we see in a JPL, uh, with it start to turn and, and move within this week now where they have a, a direct run of games coming up, I think only time will tell. Yeah, and at this point we have to mention that Antigua and Barbuda's Premier League having a lot of players from St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, TNT, Jamaica as well. The um, Guyana KFC Elite League is also having some non-nationals they are playing as well. So uh, we've got to start looking at those, those leagues as well as far as, you know, improving... Uh, Caribbean football is concerned. Sportsmax's feature game on Wednesday, though, police against Caledonia and AC Port of Spain against Defence Force. That would be three of the top four teams playing. Action expected to be entertaining, Brent? Yeah, I think it'll be entertaining. And, and you know, the, the fact that Defence Force and AC Port of Spain, police needs to win, uh, of course, to stay up with the big boys. And, and of course, uh, Defence Force, defend, the, 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 the current uh, trophy holders, they started to slip away from the race. They had a, a, a dagger at the heart against Caledonia in their last outing uh, and dropping two points and going away with a one-all draw. Uh, so they also have to find some way and some momentum. So this game for me, Lance, is a straight final for Defence Force. I think for AC Port of Spain, if they came away with a point, they'll be happy. Uh, but of course, as I said, miscellaneous police are in hot pursuit. They need to win that game as well. So it's a lot to play for tomorrow at the Hazy Crawford Stadium. We've had some rain today, so it's not going to be... One of those hard and tough pitches here in Trinidad and Tobago. And they, they have the luxury of playing on the lush green surface of the Mr. Hazley Crawford Stadium. So why not come on down and see some good football in the, the Port of Spain capital of Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, and if you're complaining, Brent, about the quality of football, I know you're past 40 years old now, but maybe you need to come out of retirement and add some quality to the, to the Trinidad and Tobago Professional Football League. I, I think my punditry is, is more than enough quality being added to the football as well. And and uh, my, my slight backstory that I have over the last two weeks is, is also a reason why I probably would stay away from putting back on the boots. <laughs> oh, no. All right, Brent, we'll check in with you tomorrow. Big games on tomorrow and we'll be looking closely at them. Thanks, man. Take care. All right, guys. Have, have a great one. Take care. Yeah, we go to break now. Um, zone <laughs> Update 2 is coming up next, I think. Back.